Introduced in 1953 as essential tools for scuba divers, the Royal Submariner and the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms have ascended in price and status to become legitimate luxury icons. But there was actually another dive watch that was released in the same year, the Zodiac Seawolf. A watch that pairs its own history and heritage with an impressive modern collection and surprisingly attainable range of price points. And in this video, we're gonna go through everything you need to know before looking at the Zodiac Seawolf. Simply put, a dive watch that I think deserves more respect and appreciation. Let's jump in. So for this video, we have three different chapters that we're going to look at, starting with the history and significance of the Seawolf, then move into the Seawolf models and major points, and then at the end, ask the question of why or why not going for Zodiac and the Seawolf in general. Now, teddyballister.com is an authorized dealer for Zodiac. We have a wide selection of different Seawolf models and models from Zodiac as a whole. So if you wanna get lost in the brand, see what is out there and available for purchase, I definitely recommend checking it out in the description below. We'll have more details there. And then also, because we're we're only going to be talking about the Seawolf here. We also will have a helpful article that will work in tandem with this video as just being even more backstory about uh, Zodiac as a brand and then looking at the other collections within uh, the brand's catalog that you should also be familiar with. So just give me a look at the Seawolf here, which I think is of course their icon. Uh, but if you want more from the brand, check out that article down below. So as mentioned in the intro, Zodiac has a much more historically significant history than I think many collectors perhaps recognize. Now the brand was founded in 1882 in the Lock, Switzerland, being known by the same name as their founder, Aris Kalam, before officially taking on the Zodiac name in 1908. Along with the majority of the Swiss watch industry at the time, Zodiac's early efforts centered around pocket watches, eventually making the switch over to wrist watches in the 1920s and 30s. Upon earning more modest success in the first half of the 20th century, Zodiac made its most indelible mark in 1953 when it released the Seawolf, a diving specific design with a rotating bezel intended to capitalize on the then rapidly growing sport of scuba diving. The original Seawolf differed from its primary competitors, the Submariner and the 50 Fathoms, with its smaller size offering a 35 millimeter wide by 42.5 millimeter long central case that was more in keeping with the non-diving watches of the time compared to the then oversized Submariner and 50 Fathoms. The watches quickly caught on thanks to their approachable dimensions and their proven reliability underwater, eventually becoming a trusted option for divers and the mass market alike. Adding intrigue to the story, the Seawolf would later become some of the most popular purchases for military forces at PXs serving in the Vietnam War. Uh, but at a time of release, it's important to note that the Zodiac Seawolf was priced right in alignment with Rolex and Blancpain. Early Seawolf ads show prices around $100, with the Submariner of the day coming in just under $150, and the 50 Fathoms going for a surprising $90, with all of these prices representing the US market of the day. I make this point just to show that at the time, people were considering Zodiac in pretty much the same league as that of Blancpain and Rolex, seeing the Seawolf as a worthy diving alternative located on the same tier compared to those iconic models. In addition to the more diving specific Seawolf, the early 60s also saw the release of the Aerospace GMT, a pilot's oriented watch that utilized the same case and basic design formula, but added a GMT caliber with a 24 hour bezel and additional GMT hand. And while not technically part of the Seawolf collection at the original onset, the influence of the original aerospace DNA is now felt in the modern Seawolf collection, making it worth mentioning here. Juxtaposed against the more monochromatic sub and 50 fathoms, the Seawolf was also more daring in terms of color, regularly leaning into more eccentric executions in terms of the dial and bezel treatment, an idea that was very much in alignment with the regular questioning of the status quo in the late 1960s and early 1970s. 
Following the original Seawolf's success, the Super Seawolf was introduced in the early 1960s, providing a significant bump in water resistance from 200 meters to a more substantial 750, and then later 1,000 meters. However, like much of the Swiss watch industry, Zodiac was imperiled by the quartz crisis of the 1970s and 80s, closing its doors more than once and changing hands several times the following decades. In 2001, Zodiac found surprisingly solid footing underneath the fossil group's typically mass market oriented range of brands, and Zodiac's market position improved with Fossil's backing. And in 2015, we saw the return of the Seawolf. Modernized with a slightly larger yet very wearable presence, an automatic caliber from Fossil-owned sister brand STP, and demonstrating much improved finishing overall, the modern Zodiac Seawolf picks up where the original left off. Differentiating itself from the modern sub in 50 Fathoms with a much more approachable price point, despite its notable history in the world of watchmaking. So just to get it out of the way up front, Zodiac does produce a number of excellent watches that are not a part of the Seawolf family, including the Quartz Grand Rally Chronographs and Dressier Olympos Automatics. Uh, but given the importance of the Seawolf, both to Zodiac's history as well as the enthusiast community, uh, we've decided to really concentrate solely on the Seawolf models in this video, as well as watches demonstrating the same case format, including the now modern Zodiac GMTs. As another note to address, Zodiac tends to now rely on calibers from STP or Swiss Technology Precision, a movement manufacturer founded in Switzerland in 2006. And while these calibers aren't as ubiquitous or proven as those from ETA or Salita, they have already developed a impressive reputation for quality and reliability and are used by many micro brands as well. Now digging into the watches themselves, we'll start with looking at Zodiac's core heritage dive watch, the Super Seawolf. Now at some point after its release in 2015, the the entire modern Seawolf collection added the Super to the name, with the Super Seawolf 53 acting as the most faithful modern recreation of the original 1953 watch in the modern lineup. The core model, typically known as the Super Seawolf 53 compression, is defined by a 40 millimeter bezel diameter overhanging a slightly smaller 39 millimeter central case, 13.3 millimeter thickness with a 48.7 millimeter lug to lug. The Super Seawolf skin, also located within the 53 collection, offers a slightly smaller sizing at 38.7 millimeters in diameter, 12.8 millimeters in thickness, and a 46.4 millimeter lug to lug. This collection typically relies on the STP 111, their version of the Eta 2824. Now compared to some other Super Seawolf models we'll get into next, the 53 is the smallest and most vintage feel range in the catalog, as has been the case since the beginning. There are numerous options here in terms of dial and bezel color, a PVD coated case or two, and even options with solid steel bezels with engraved indices and others with colorful mineral crystal uh, capped inserts. The majority of the bracelet variants are executed in a Jubilee style with an old school rivet style option offered on the 53 skin models which is probably my favorite of this model family. I'm actually wearing one right now. And they're also excellent with their rubber straps available made to resemble historical Zodiac straps. Acting as the entry-level model for Zodiac divers, the 53 typically starts around $1,200 on a rubber strap or other types of nylon or different straps that they offer. And then goes up to $1,500 on the bracelet. Were the standard Super Seawolf 53 models the OG Seawolf from 53, the 68 speaks to the larger reference of the Super Seawolf debuted in that year that offered 750 meters of water resistance compared to the 200 meters on the regular Seawolf of that day. Now the modern 68 Seawolf dates back to 2016 and presents a much larger case profile at an average of 44 millimeters in diameter by 50 millimeter lug to lug with a prominent thickness of 16 millimeters. The barrel or cushion shaped case has hooded lugs, a prominent locking ring surrounding the crystal and a push to turn operation of the bezel that calls back to the original models whose cases were produced by EPSA of super compressor fame. Where the 53 is the most true to the original model in the collection, the 68 feels a bit more like a modern professional diving watch with its size, a bulkier feel, and a completely unnecessary helium escape valve and 1,000 meters of water resistance. The 68 also typically relies on a basic STP caliber, and this collection again can be had on a rubber strap or stainless steel 
Facebook bracelet and offers fewer variants compared to the 53 by a wide margin with only two options in the modern catalog, one being the collaboration with underwater photographer Andy Mann. And the Super Seawolf 68 starts at around $1,600 in price for the standard model and then jumps up to $2,300 for that Andy Mann version that also comes with two additional straps and some shark branding throughout. And while this model is certainly a solid choice for actual diving duty, if you're the kind of person who actually dives with the watch, both the 53 and 68 though somewhat surprisingly lack the ISO 6425 certification, a trait exclusively bestowed upon the new Super Seawolf Pro Diver. So at the time of recording this video, this is a brand new watch for the most part and offers an almost totally modern approach to Zodiac's aquatic design language. Despite demonstrating a few elements that are reminiscent of other Seawolf models, the brand started from zero with the goal of producing a new ISO certified dive watch capable of being called a real professional dive watch and positioned to compete against uh, the bigger boys in the underwater timekeeping industry. The sizing here is also different with a 42 millimeter diameter by a 49.6 millimeter lug to lug and a thickness of 14 millimeters at that central case and wears closer to a 41 millimeter case in actuality. The specs are solid offering 300 meters of water resistance, another mineral cap bezel and improved loom in the process. In contrast to either of the last two model families, the Pro Diver offers a COSC certified SW200 from Salita and is available either in a titanium case and bracelet as a limited edition for $2,500 or a stainless steel variant with a range of four different color schemes for a significantly less expensive price of $1,700. And while this family lacks some of the historical context offered by other watches in the Seawolf offering, the Pro Diver feels like Zodiac's attempt to take its history and meld it with some more modern elements acting as a fine final form to the model family's evolution, at least for now in 2022. Now getting into more of the oddballs from this collection, here we have Zodiac also offering a range of GMTs and world time style watches under the Sea Wolf umbrella, with these watches now acting as the modern home for the aerospace GMT's iconic design language. Now, given that Zodiac originally relaunched these watches under the Aerospace GMT name as a limited edition in 2019, it's a bit odd to see the brand then shift to calling these Super Seawolf models when these became part of the regular collection in 2020, uh, but I digress here. Both the GMT and the World Time utilize larger 53 cases with the same 40 millimeter diameter, 13.3 millimeter thickness, and 48.7 millimeter lug to lug, and 200 meters of water resistance in the process. Process. In either case, the watches utilize the Soprod C125 here, going outside of STP, given STP's limitations for GMT calibers as of now. And again, there are a number of different dial and bezel configurations to choose from, and even a two-tone option. Now, the world time from this family operates with a GMT caliber, meaning that it's going to be more like a GMT here rather than a true world time, but it does have that functionality, which is nice to see for the price point. This travel-oriented subfamily in the Super Seawolf collection comes in at $1,800 and are among some of my favorites from the brand. And these always seem to pop with their more uh, daring colorways. And one other thing I do wanna mention is just the amount of limited editions that Zodiac has done over the last five or so years. They have certainly done many with different outlets, different retailers, talking about Topper Jeweler editions, uh, Blog to Watch, uh, Worn and Wound, Dinky. They pretty much have all really thrown their hat into the ring in terms of doing uh, limited editions with the brand. But I think many of them have uh, been done with some unique flair. Uh, but I just bring this up because there are some uh, just examples out there that are kind of confusing. You know, where does this exist? What's going on? Uh, so I think it is important to bring up. But now let's talk about why or why not Zodiac. Now, I think there's a few things for Zodiac. Let's start from the side of maybe why you wouldn't look at this brand. And I think the first thing is they usually are going to incorporate all this daring color and are going to be more out there. So for certain people, it's just not going to be for them. They of course carved out this lane for themselves, which I think is very unique, which is good. Uh, but some people might not like how playful and eccentric some of their dials and designs are. The other thing that I'll bring up is the lack of ISO rating. Uh, given their dive watch history, I am not somebody that's gonna care about 
this as much, uh, just because I think for 200 meters of water resistance for a dive watch, that is more than enough. And I think this ISO compliance is kind of silly, but still even considered given their history and what watches they're going to be associated with when looking in history, I think this is another thing that maybe gets brought up for those that really love that dive watch pedigree. And then also talking about the bracelets. I think the Jubilee bracelet is nice with its kind of spring-loaded element uh, near the clasp. It's kind of kind of interesting in which uh, it allows you to flex your wrist a little bit more seamlessly. Uh, but one of the class when it comes to the Oyster style, it, it just needs some work. I don't think the bracelet is bad by any means, but one thing I have noticed is just how this clasp, trying to get that fold over lock it is really difficult to get a fingernail un under there and I actually think it's kind of painful. So I think they could definitely redesign this clasp, uh, but the bracelet itself and the bracelets themselves, I think are pretty well done. But now let's talk about why should you go for Zodiac and why I think these are pretty compelling. I wanna do a full video about them. Now I remember seeing a vintage Zodiac Seawolf and I was like, wow, that is a cool looking watch. And I think that goes into the first point. Zodiacs have their own design DNA. And for watches in this $1,000 to $1,500 price range, I think that's actually pretty hard to come by when it comes to dive watches. Pretty much all dive watches, for the most part, have this shared DNA and design style. So to have any element of being able to stand on your own, I think is rather rare. And Zodiac certainly has that. Then you talk about this price range of $1,000 to $1,500 that they fall in. I think they're pretty reasonably priced. I think they fall in a range that's not as busy. You have a ton of dive watches under $500 and maybe some more between $500 and $1,000. And then a lot that are collecting around $2,000. But this falls in that range that I do think it's not as crowded and allows them to separate quite a bit more. And when you combine that uh, design and history that's going along with these, I think it allows them to be even more compelling here. I mentioned the idea around history. I think to have a dive watch release in 1953 alongside the Submariner in the 50 Fathoms is incredible. That's hard to beat when it comes to dive watch history. And then two other points why I like Zodiac. I think one is going to be that the wearability on them are really solid. I think you'll be able to find one that's going to fit your preferences, whether you're going for the skin, that's going to wear more like a 39 millimeter dive watch, kind of reminds me of a 58 case and how it wears, if not even a little bit smaller really wears wonderfully than a traditional 53 that's going to wear kind of like a 40. The lugs are a little bit longer, but still wears like a true 40. And then you can go into uh, the Pro now with the 42 millimeter case uh, that I think offers something for those with larger wrists out there, uh, which is also nice to see. And then finally, I just think that they're a brand that actually listens to the enthusiast crowd now. It just seems like they're very open to uh, doing collaborations, thinking about, okay, we have something really cool here with this brand that could be more nimble, uh, despite having a, a big group kind of backing them up in the fossil group, uh, but I think they've been able to navigate this appropriately and I hope they will continue to do so because uh, I think there's still plenty of room to grow for Zodiac. I think they're a fun brand. Uh, they have this really kind of down to earth type of feel to them, but also something that's so different. And we're talking about collectors that are either really in this price range of buying watches in this thousand to two thousand dollar range or those have, that have collection that spans way beyond this and collecting luxury watches it's very rare to find where there is an intersection of people that i think can enjoy the product and i think zodiac is one of those just because they have this really almost unmatched history in the price segment and then also this kind of distinct design language that makes them separate from the competition. I think that's kind of a winning formula uh, and why I think Zodiac's a pretty cool brand, specifically the Seawolves are really cool. But all right, guys, that is my video looking at the Seawolf family of watches from Zodiac. If you enjoyed this deep dive, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. I uh, really would appreciate that. If you want us to do more of these deep dives on certain collections and models and just things to consider before you uh, start to go down this path, be happy to do it. Any encouragement in the comments would be wonderful. Also check out the variety of Zodiac watches we have on teddybaldister.com. We're a full authorized dealer of the brand, have some really sweet different offerings on the site uh, for pretty much all of these different collections. So definitely get lost and have some fun. And if you want more things Zodiac, I would also check out that article down below uh, where we go into more details even beyond the Seawolf collection. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.